Saab Hassan Youssef knows Hamas better than anybody else. He's spent many years in Israeli jails because of his links to the terror group, and those links could hardly be more direct. His father, Sheikh Hassan Youssef, was one of Hamas's founding leaders. Well, Mossad ultimately flipped on Hamas while in Israeli custody. He spied for Israel. His intelligence is said to have prevented suicide bombings and other attacks. He's now an American citizen after claiming asylum and a converted Christian. But he's watching events in Gaza with barely concealed fury from his now undisclosed uh, location. And he has a chilling warning for Palestinians in this interview we recorded earlier. And I'm joined now by Mossab uh, Hassan Youssef. Uh, Mossab, great to see you. Um, it's an extraordinary story, yours. Uh, you were the eldest son of a man who was one of the co-founders of Hamas. And indeed, for your early formative years, you worked alongside your, your father. So you got a great insight into Hamas. Tell me this from the start. What were the intended plans for Hamas when it was founded, when it started, when it developed? What was the plan? You know, since its establishment, uh, Hamas uh, uh, has one goal in mind which is annihilating the state of Israel. Like the best, it's a compromise that they could do is having a truce for 15 years, a ceasefire for 15 years as maximum, you know, but with no guarantee how they will act after. It's absurd. Uh, it's not a secret that Hamas wants to destroy the state of Israel. They cannot accept Israel or accept uh, Israel's right to exist. What was the point uh, that you decided to get out of there, to, to flee this world, this environment you've been brought up in? You know, I, I have I have m many reasons. Since I was a child, I asked my father many questions about Hamas delusions, about their brutality, about their abuse of power. And always he justified, you know, their uh, position. Then I was imprisoned with Hamas. I spent about 27 months in Israeli prisons where Hamas was torturing their own members, our own people within Israeli prisons. They killed actually and tortured hundreds of prisoners. Uh, and this is when I start asking myself the question, what if Hamas become the ruler at some point? What will they do to our people? And uh, many years later, Hamas became the ruler of Gaza. And uh, I wasn't surprised uh, by their br uh, brutality. When you heard what happened on October the 7th, what was your feeling about that? Look, as I told you, I'm not surprised by Hamas brutality, but I was surprised by the scale of their attack. You know, not to this degree, wiping out entire communities, you know, messing with the nuclear power, the most powerful country in the region, a country with a, a trauma, a great trauma from the past, with a, a memory of a Holocaust and uh, all the Nazis did in the past century, you, they opened uh, the gates of hell on the Palestinian people. This is how irresponsible this group people are, you know, that they are willing to actually sacrifice many Palestinian children, the entire Palestinian people, and use them as a fuel to just achieve their ideological uh, agendas, their religious agendas. They are careless. They don't care for the human life. We have to separate between what so-called Palestinian cause and Hamas cause. Hamas cause is a sick one. It's coming from the pit of hell, you know, and they need to be removed uh, from power. This is my message. As an ex-Hamas member, as a son of one of Hamas founders, that enough of this. If we don't stop them now, the next war is going to be deadlier. And only God knows what will happen next if Hamas is not finished as soon as possible. Mossab, how many regular Palestinians, particularly in Gaza, do you think sympathize with Hamas or indeed fully support them? You know, once Hamas is removed from power, we're going to witness people celebrating in Gaza. I guarantee you that. The people of Gaza are oppressed for so long, and they had to endure siege, they had to endure violence, many wars, uh, uh, for the sake of Hamas' uh, uh, lust for power. 
and for Hamas political ambition. When this comes to an end, I promise you that the Palestinian people, first of all, will thank Israel for what they did. Second, the uh, idea of annihilating the Jews and the state of Israel will be dropped forever. You know, because Hamas is the, you can say, the last experiment uh, of uh, adapting violence, trying to annihilate and destroy the state of Israel. This didn't work for Yasser Arafat. It took him 40 years to realize this. And Hamas has been trying for 35 years to destroy Israel. Finally, I hope that they will come to this understanding that Israel is going nowhere. If they insist on annihilating Israel, and of course, if Iran keeps on insisting uh, on this goal, this means the destruction of the entire region. This is the only uncertain outcome of this, because Israel is going nowhere. How do we get to peace from here? You know, this time, I'm afraid that war is the only way to peace. Uh, because if Hamas is not removed from power, uh, then they will uh, build more military, they will build uh, longer uh, range missiles, and the next attack, the next war is going to be deadlier. The use of force is the last resort. You can find this in every culture. And unfortunately, now Hamas left Israel and the free world as well, with no choice uh, but to fight them and put an end for their violence. Uh, many civilians are dying, I understand this. Their blood is on the hands of Hamas, and Hamas only. Five words you pronounce wrong two years before your brain starts shutting down. Dementia is now known as type 3 diabetes, according to... You see, it's interesting you say that, because a lot of pro-Palestinians who I've had on the show in the last two weeks don't accept that argument. They say the blood of the civilians in Gaza is exclusively on the hands of Israel, and that Israel's waged uh, a repressive occupation for many decades. Um, there's been a prison camp for Gazans for a long, long time, and that that has created the environment through which a terror group like Hamas can thrive and indeed win an election, as they did in 2005. Do you buy into any of that? I mean, do you think that Israel has overreacted already? To what happened to them? Their argument is, what is proportion when you have a terror attack like that on your people? Look, since my childhood, uh, and I am hearing the stories from pro-Palestine and from those who are using what's so-called the Palestinian cause, they care the least for the Palestinian children and their future. You know, I, I am the legit, uh, legitimate representative of the Palestinian children. The child within me speaks. I don't want somebody coming from London or somebody coming from the other side of the world to tell me what is the struggle of the Palestinian children. The Palestinian children, the Palestinian society has been hijacked by these criminals and anybody who takes side, uh, their side is participating in their crime. This is my answer to those people. And for the civilian casualties, etc., you know, first of all, Hamas is using, and it's very clearly, it's a fact that Hamas used civilians as human shields. It's a fact. Then it's a fact that Israel call and warn civilians to evacuate buildings before they strike them. But in the meantime, Hamas put roadblocks to stop civilians from evacuating to safe zones. Hamas single misfire killed hundreds of refugees taking shelter at a hospital, and they blamed Israel. What are we talking about here? Israel is a democracy. Israel is accountable. Israel is not thirsty for the Palestinian blood. In the meantime, Israel is capable of wiping out Arab capitals in seconds. Why Israel does not attempt to abuse its power? But why, when the Arabs have just a little bit of power, a couple of missiles, they misuse power by launching them at civilians and kill them in their living rooms? We have a fundamental problem, and we need to stop blaming Israel. We invited this upon our heads, and the rest of the world, if they don't know 
the reality on the ground, it's better than the Sharab. Mossab, your passion uh, and your anger is very palpable here and certainly very different to most of the pro-Palestinian voices I've had. And you know, I sense the Palestinian plight of its people is very much in your heart. Do you still have contact with, with any of your family? This is irrelevant right now. I don't have any contact with my family and I don't care anymore. You know, enough bloodshed and enough involvement from people who don't care. They're just uh, warriors on keyboard, you know, and they're just storming uh, world capitals saying free Palestine, free Palestine. They don't know what the hell Palestine is. I am Palestine. And I say it's enough of Hamas. It's enough of the corrupt leaderships that they are killing our people, misleading them to hell. Is enough of that. We don't want Palestinian state. I don't want Palestinian state. Palestinian children need education. They need security. They need life. This is what they need. They don't need another corrupt Arab regime. Is it possible to get rid of Hamas in the way that Israel is currently trying to do through uh, airstrike bombardments and, and it is planned now an imminent ground invasion? Is that the best way to do it? Or is there a danger of radicalizing a lot more young Palestinians to the Hamas cause in the process. Listen to this. We are going to remove Hamas from power. Remember my words, okay? And Hamas did not only bring the wrath of Israel over Gaza. Hamas brought the wrath of God. We are going to remove them from power and we are going to persecute their leaders and we are going to bring them, bring them to justice and the world will witness their punishment. And everyone who, who take their side today in this state of confusion, thinking that this is a joke, I tell those people that you are going to regret taking the side of Hamas. You are going to take the, to regret taking the side of those criminals who are uh, killing uh, the Palestinian people. Mossab, you were born in Ramallah. That's your home. Do you dream of going home one day? Is that something you still aspire to do? I prefer not to ask to answer this question. I understand. Mossab, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Um, it's it's extraordinary to hear your story. And it's uh, a remarkable pitch that you make to the people of Palestine. And it's one that um, they will hear and will see their reaction. But I appreciate you joining me. Thank you very much. Thank you.